المطلوب في سوريا نظام توقيع عربي على بياض لامريكا واسرائيل Hezbollah Secretary General stresses that in Syria we support reforms and the regime back in resistance movements. Russia regrets double standard policy towards the Middle East. Lebanese sources confirm that armed groups on Syrian Lebanese borders work on targeting Syrian security personnel. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to our news for today. Hezbollah Secretary General Hassan Nasrallah has voiced support for reform in Syria and for a resistance steadfast regime which backs resistance movements. Sayyid Nasrallah added that there are certain sides who do not want reform, security, and stability in Syria. Instead, they want to destroy Syria in order to compensate for their defeat in Iraq because Syria had taken part in bringing about such a defeat. <laughs> In his word on the 10th of the month of Muharram anniversary today, Sayyid Nasrullah said the council that was formed in Istanbul has presented its credentials to the American and Israeli sides when it promised it would cut off relations with the resistance movements if it took over power. Sayyid Nasrullah affirmed that what is wanted from Syria is not reform, pluralism or the abolition of corruption. <laughs> What is wanted is an Arab regime of surrender and treachery that would comply with American dictates. He added that what Syria needs is dialogue and a calm handling of the situation. Hezbollah Secretary General said the USA was defeated in Iraq because it had come to it with the intention not to get out. But the Iraqi people's steadfastness and resistance and the high cost of occupation compelled it to take the option of withdrawal. Nasrullah said the Iraqi resistance operations were not accorded the appropriate news media coverage. They were put under deliberate blackout. This confirms the nature of the satellite channels that control news media. Moreover, the news of American withdrawal has been deliberately ignored. Consequently, honest news media should shed light on the American defeat and the triumph of the Iraqi people. Russian Deputy Foreign Minister Mikhail Bogdanov has expressed his country's regret over the stance taken on the basis of double standards when it comes to the assessment of the developments and events in various countries away from the principles of the UN Charter and Security Council resolutions. Bogdanov said Russia rejects foreign military intervention in Syria and it knows from experience the results of the scenario of war and destruction in Libya committed under the cover of protecting civilians. This confirms the need for concern sides inside and outside Syria and the world community as well as the UN Security Council to work for preventing quo and the deterioration of the situation in Syria towards a civil war. The Russian Deputy Foreign Minister added that Russia is naturally not a member of the Arab League but knows from international experiences in other parts of the world that the sanctions will not bring about positive results. Bogdanov pointed out that Russia is in touch with the Syrian leadership, the opposition and representatives of all sides and parties in the Syrian community. He added that political desire constitutes the basis of dialogue among all parties in Syria and that the Syrian leadership is aware of this and has expressed its readiness to take effective tangible steps in this direction. The Russian Deputy Foreign Minister voiced regret over the rejection of the Syrian opposition who receives finance, armament and news media coverage from abroad of dialogue with the Syrian leadership. He called on all Syrian parties to conduct a dialogue on the required reforms for the Syrian community and to work out a new constitution and develop democratic life and society. 
Meanwhile, Russia has decided to downgrade its diplomatic relations with Qatar after the Russian ambassador of Doha was assaulted by the security and customs personnel at Doha airport and was subject to an attempt to kidnap his diplomatic bag. The Russian Foreign Ministry said in a statement that Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has notified the Qatari Prime Minister and Foreign Minister Hamad bin Jassim of the decision to downgrade the relations with this state in addition to reducing the level of contacts with the Qatari Embassy in Moscow. The statement said the Russian Foreign Ministry of Farm in a memo of protest addressed on the 30th of last November to the Qatari Embassy in Moscow that the incident assumed an unprecedented nature and constituted a severe violation of international law and will leave its negative repercussions on the Russian Qatari relations. The statement called on the Qatari side to present an official apology immediately and take all necessary measures to know the perpetrators and punish them and to prevent the repetition of such incidents in the future. The statement added that the Russian ambassador to Qatar, Mr. Neto Rinko, is currently undergoing treatment and will leave Qatar in the upcoming days. An official source in Homs categorically denied the news circulated by Al Arabiya TV channel yesterday about an alleged firing of three shells by the Syrian army on Khalid ibn al-Walid Mosque, stressing that these reports are false and baseless and come within the context of a massive media campaign against Syria. Sana correspondent quoted the source as saying that citizens are strongly advised to verify such news and not be misled by suspicious TV channels which seek to create chaos and sedition in the country. An armed terrorist group in Homs opened fire at the National Hospital building, wounding one hospital guard and causing material damages to the building. Homs residents condemned the attack against health facilities which provide essential services to ordinary citizens. In Idlib, authorities captured 11 top wanted terrorists in the town of Biskun Kul in Jabal al Zawiya. They also confiscated large quantities of weapons, including Klashenkov rifles, night vision, binoculars, advanced communication devices, and one Thuraya phone. Authorities also defused six explosive charges in the same area. Lebanese media sources said that armed groups have been using Wadi Khaled and Aridani crossing points to cross the border and attack Syrian border guards in the area. The sources quoting Lebanese residents added that quantities of ammunition along with RBG shells were found at a Redani crossing point confirming the presence of gunmen in the area. With this we conclude our news bulletin for this afternoon. Up next the latest business of market news with the radio.